In this paper, we report results from the Global Observational Geotag Study, which assessed outcomes in patients with EGFR, mutation-positive, non-small cell lung cancer, who received sequential afatinib and ozimertinib in a real-world clinical practice setting. Over the past decade, treatment of EGFR mutation-positive non-small cell lung cancer has been revolutionized with the development of EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. These agents are associated with improved clinical outcomes and improved tolerability compared with the previous standard of care, platinum doublet chemotherapy. Three generations of EGFR TKIs are available for first-line treatment of EGFR mutation-positive NSCLC, with recent head-to-head -head trials demonstrating that the second-generation EGFR TKIs afatinib and dacomitinib, plus the third-generation EGFR TKI ozimertinib, are preferable to the first-generation EGFR TKIs allotinib and gefitinib. Regardless of which first-line EGFR TKI is chosen, acquired resistance to therapy is inevitable. Therefore, a key consideration when assessing therapeutic choices is the availability of subsequent treatment options following disease progression. The predominant molecular resistance mechanism to gefitinib, erlotinib and afatinib is the emergence of the T790M mutation in exon 20 of the EGFR gene, which is present in approximately 50 to 70% of tumors at the time of acquired resistance. Ozimertinib was originally developed to target T790M positive tumors and is approved in this setting based on the data from the Aura trials. Hence, there is an argument for treating patients with sequential EGFR TKIs with ozimertinib reserved as a second-line option to maximize the time of targeted therapies and defer the need for more toxic chemotherapy regimen. Consequently, the Global Observational Geotag study aimed to assess outcomes in patients who received afatinib followed by ozimertinib. We reviewed medical records of patients with EGFR-mutated advanced NSCLC who received afatinib as first-line treatment and who developed the T790M mutation and received second-line ozimertinib treatment. Patients were excluded if they had received any other first- or second-line treatments, had active brain metastases, or had been treated in a clinical trial. The primary outcome was the overall time on treatment, defined as the time from the first dose of afatinib to that of the last dose of ozimertinib, or death. Key limitations include the exclusion of patients who died on first-line afatinib. However, in the Lux lung trials, only approximately 6% of patients died on first-line afatinib. In addition, owing to study timelines, patients who derived long-term benefit from first-line afatinib had little chance to be enrolled in the study and may therefore have been underrepresented. The patient baseline characteristics were typical of a real-world first-line EGFR mutation-positive NSCLC population and included patients not typically included in clinical trials, such as those with ECOG performance status of at least two. One quarter of patients were Asian, and nearly three quarters had the DEL19 mutation. This high proportion of DEL19 patients likely reflects the higher frequency of T790M acquired resistance in DEL19 positive versus L858R positive tumors. It has been reported that around 75% of patients with DEL19 positive disease will acquire T790M resistant. Our results demonstrate that sequential afatinib and ozimertinib therapy provided sustained clinical benefit in the real-world clinical practice setting with an overall median time on treatment of 27.6 months. Importantly for practicing physicians, the clinical benefit of sequential afatinib and ozimertinib was seen across patient subgroups with a notably prolonged median time on treatment reported for Asian patients and patients with DEL19 mutations. Age did not impact the benefit of sequential afatinib and ozimertinib therapy. Of particular relevance to real-world practice, patients with factors associated with a poor prognosis, such as those with brain metastases and ECOG performance status of at least two, derived clinical benefit from the sequential treatment. Similarly, 
Encouraging results were seen in two and 2.5 year landmark analyses of overall survival. While overall survival data are immature and the retrospective nature of the study does not allow for a control arm, the estimated two and 2.5 year overall survival rates of 79% and 69% are encouraging. Further encouraging results was seen when the analysis was restricted to patients with ECOG performance status of 0 or 1. For these patients, the two-year landmark was 84%. To conclude, these results demonstrate sustained clinical benefit with sequential afatinib and ozimertinib across a broad real-world population of patients with EGFR mutation-positive NSCLC. So, what do these results mean for real-world clinical practice? Importantly for clinicians, these results support a sequencing strategy of afatinib followed by ozimertinib in patients with EGFR mutation-positive NSCLC who acquire T790M, with particularly encouraging results seen in patients with DEL19-positive disease and Asian patients.